Good evening. Welcome to Drink Lab. My name is Clay. I'm coming to you from, uh, from the bar lab here at Loretta's Larder at Pier 15. And tonight's topic, one of my favorites, is carbonation. So we are going to um, talk about how you can carbonate cocktails at home, what affects your ability to carbonate them effectively, uh, and different techniques and, and kind of uh, tips and tricks and all so on and so forth. Uh, in order to make it uh, that give it that great effervescence that you that you can enjoy in all sorts of different drinks, um, so we are going to carbonate one of our favorite cocktails this time of year, the Corpse Survivor uh, Number Two. There's a number of different variations on the Corpse Survivor, uh, and Number Two is probably the most popular one, uh, and it also is a perfect uh, cocktail to make when talking about um, carbonation and kind of the different things that affect uh, your ability to, to carbonate a cocktail. So um, there are a couple different ways in which you can carbonate uh, a liquid. Um, the first is um, the old kind of the champagne method that you know which involves fermentation. Uh, where sugar and yeast is added to a liquid, it's then placed under pressure and it goes through a fermentation which produces uh, CO2 and uh, causes the carbonation inside the uh, vessel. Uh, that, that, is a, uh, that is something that requires a lot of time, uh, a lot of practice, a lot of skill, and something that we don't want to mess with because you can, those bottles can explode. Uh, the byproduct of that fermentation also uh, is alcohol, which uh, can be a, uh, something that we don't want to mess around with. Um, so the easier way to carbonate things is through forced carbonation, which is what you do when you dissolve uh, carbon dioxide gas into a liquid. So one way we do that is through having a carbon CO2 tank and a regulator and a Cornelius keg. Um, that's how we do large volumes. I'm going to assume yours is broken. So we're going to do this carbonation method um, utilizing one of my all-time favorite bar tools, which is uh, a, um, a whipped cream canister, or an ISI canister, they're called, um, also known as whippets. Um, but that's used in a lot of commercial kitchens to pressurize and charge um, cream so you can, you can make fresh whipped cream. Um, the third way to do this is with a, a piece of home equipment that you may or may not have, and that's a soda stream. Now, they don't recommend that you do that, so that is on, that is, you can try if you want. Um, it, there are ways to, to utilize that soda stream, I'll talk to you about uh, later on. Um, but this is really the most effective and the safest method. Uh, because this vessel is solid. The other thing about this vessel that's very important if you're going to buy one of these um, is that you get one that has this indentation on the bottom of the uh, canister. And the reason for this, uh, the reason this is so important is that this is actually a kind of a fail safe. So that if you over pressurize this thing, this will pop out um, before this pops out. Uh, so this is a safety measure. So if you're going to buy one of these, any brand will work as long as it's got this. Okay? So what happens when you carbonate a beverage? What can affect your ability to carbonate a liquid? Um, there's a couple different things that affect that. Um, one is temperature. Uh, Two is, uh, in terms of cocktails, is the alcohol volume of the cocktail, the ABV. Um, CO2 dissolves better in, in water than it does in alcohol. So the higher the alcohol content, the more difficult it is, the, the less gas you're going to be able to get into the liquid, which is why we chose the Corp Survivor number two, uh, because it involves um, some liqueurs, which are lower in alcohol. It also involves citrus. Um, which will lower the alcohol content as well. The Corp Survivor, the original Corp Survivor is more like a Manhattan style drink. It's all booze. Um, so you can carbonate those things, but it doesn't give you the, the same level of effervescence. The third thing that affects carbonation 
Because remember, we want to we want to make we want to keep as much of that gas dissolved in that liquid until it hits your tongue, and then you want to get that effervescence. That's the whole point is that flavor and that texture from drinking a carbonated beverage, right? It's no good if it, if it all goes off in the glass or in the vessel, then it's just flat and it's like, why did we go through this process? So the citrus has, um, it has pulp, okay? And anything that's in the liquid, any particulate matter that's in the liquid is, is, is what's called a nucleation point, which means that the gas can attach itself to that and come and start to form a bubble and then, and then leave the liquid. So we have to clarify the citrus juice, okay? There's a number of ways that we can do that. Uh, and the general rule is the longer it takes, the more effective it is. Um, so you might want to give yourself a little bit of prep time, unless you have one of these, a centrifuge. But I'm going to assume that like your carbonation rig, uh, that's broken. So we're going to go with a more with an easier at home version, uh, which involves uh, uh, filtering. But first, I want to show you the difference and the reason why the investment in time is really makes is important. So this first uh, bit of citrus is just fresh squeezed from a citrus press, um, and you can see it's got pulp. It's got uh, uh, it's got all kinds of particulate matter in it. The second version. Uh, is strained through uh, kind of a home tea strainer. And that is better, but it still has a fair amount of pulp and, um, and particulate matter in it. The third is, has been strained through a coffee filter and, a, and kind of a commercial strainer. You can use anything, um, which takes a little bit more time because it has to sit in there. But it yields this really uh, clear um, citrus juice. So it's removing all of that particulate matter. There, the other way that you can at home make that even more effective is to uh, purchase a little bottle of Pectinex, which is just an en enzyme you can get uh, online. Um, and it's food safe. And you can put it directly in the juice, just a few drops. Let it sit. Let it work its magic for about 20, 30 minutes. And it, does, it, 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 it helps break down the pectin which is what holds all those little bits of pulp together so that they can then more easily be removed through your coffee filter. So if you use the Pectinex and then pass it through the coffee filter, it's, it's really quite effective. It's, you're, you're approaching the, the effectiveness of a centrifuge, um, believe it or not. Um, so we're going to now make the cocktail and uh, talk about those uh, those factors, uh, those carbonation factors. And luckily, this particular cocktail really, uh, the making of the cocktail is going to help us tremendously in the carbonation. So the first thing we said, remember, was temperature. That um, the, the colder the liquid, the easier it is to get the gas dissolved into it. Um, you're changing states, right? So you know like when you dissolve something in a liquid, a solid, like sugar, like when you're making simple syrup, you heat it up. This is the reverse process. So we want to make this thing, this liquid cold. Luckily, we're going to shake the cocktail, which is going to accomplish that. Um, so the, uh, the recipe is a one to one to one uh, equal parts recipe. So it's really easy. So it's one ounce of gin. It's one ounce of lillet which is an aromatized wine. So it's dry white wine that's been steeped in herbs uh, and, and um, citrus. And um, it's, uh, it's, a great, it's a great ingredient. Uh, and then orange liqueur. Um, I'm using Curacao. You can use Cointreau, Grand Marnier, whatever you like. Uh, and then, and then the traditional recipe calls for one ounce of our clarified lemon juice. But carbonation brings to the party not just bubbles, but also flavor. Um, the CO2 tends to give a little bit um, more, it, it tends to add a little bit of tartness to your cocktails. Um, it interacts differently with different alcohols. 
Um, if you're using an oak aged spirit, say bourbon or brandy, it's not going to have as, as much of an effect um, because of the tannin in that, in that spirit. It, it's, it interacts differently. But with, with uh, clear spirits, uh, particularly gin uh, or vodka, um, it's going to give it a little bit of uh, tartness, the, the, the CO2. So I'm going to back off the citrus just a touch to compensate. So normally when this cocktail, as I said, which is a one to one to one ratio, uh, I'm going to do about three quarters of an ounce of our clarified uh, lemon juice. Okay, so the nice thing is that we are now not only chilling during the shaking process, but we're also bringing the ABV, the alcohol volume, down. Because you, when you shake, you not only chill, but you dilute. So we've shaken our cocktail. And we've done, we've taken two of the steps to enhance the carbonation and added that to the, uh, to the original, the first step, which was the clarification of the citrus. So we now have a cold liquid that's lower in alcohol than when we started and has less nucleation sites. And we're going to strain this into our whipped cream canister. Okay. Then we're going to seal this up, make sure it's on there nice and tight. And then we will take two of our chargers, our CO2 cartridges, and we are going to pressurize this liquid. So the first one's in, give it a little shake. Second one's in. Now the nice thing about this technique is it's pretty much instantaneous. Uh, the gas that's going to dissolve has basically done its thing within the first 10 to, to 20 seconds. So you don't have to wait around, which is good because it's, it's cold and you, wanna, you want it to stay nice and cold. Um, so now comes the very important part. This is removing the pressure, OK? So luckily, these ISI canisters have a vent, OK? And you're going to take a cup. Uh, this is to protect you from painting your ceiling. And you're just going to slowly release the pressure, OK? Then uh, we're going to open it up. And again, you've got to respect the fact that this is under pressure. So we're going to make sure we do this very slowly. This is also the same thing that you're going to do if you want to, to use the home equipment. Just make sure that after you pressurize it and, and dissolve the gas, you very slowly open the canister. And voila, you don't have a big, foamy, crazy mess. Um, I think one of the best ways to understand this is if you've ever made a mimosa at home and you realize when you pour the champagne, the carbonated liquid, into the juice, it just always foams up. There's no way to get, to, to get that to not happen. And that's because of all the pulp and all the nucleation points that are in the juice. We've taken all that stuff out. So you hopefully won't have a big kind of uh, foamy situation when you're, when you're opening this up. So. We take our chilled glass. Now, the final component of this cocktail is absinthe. And absinthe is a polarizing ingredient. Uh, if I was making this cocktail for, for my wife, I would, give the, uh, I would give this the same treatment that my, uh, my dad did his martinis and the vermouth, which is to just wave the bottle in front of the glass. But I like to have a little bit of that flavor. Um, so we're just going to do a little absinthe rinse in the glass. You can utilize this ingredient uh, to taste, really. I mean, you don't want to overpower the drink, and absinthe can be quite strong. But if you like the flavor, 
you know, leave a little bit in there. If you just want a hint, um, you just rinse the glass and you pour it out. And now we have hopefully created, much like the reanimator, a carbonated corpse survivor. Number two, please visit us at www.loretta'slarder.com where you will find uh, the Corpse Survivor as well as other cocktails for you to purchase and pick up for enjoyment at home. The Carbonated Corpse Survivor number two. Thank you. Thank you very much. Feel free to garnish this cocktail with an eyeball or <laughs> never. <laughs> <laughs>